welcome to When Sages View podcast. I'm Sarah Christensen, the host. It is uh, about 7.37 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on January 25th, 2023. It is a midwinter season here in the Pacific Northwest as an astrologer being in the Northern Hemisphere. That's kind of where uh, I'm focused and but I understand and value kind of the Southern Hemisphere perspective as well. I want to mention that here in the beginning. I am an astrologer. I I have studied and been focused into two disciplines, and that will be part of my podcast. I'm primarily an evolutionary astrologer, and I studied um, also traditional astrology. So my primary teachers have been Stephen Forrest through his AP program in Northern California and Southern California, and I achieved his master level in February of 2020 before we all had a major event uh, across the world and back in 2000 I think it was uh, 1718 I think it's around that period of time that I also took the courses that Demetra George had done for her course in traditional astrology and her excellent series that she did over, I think, about three different sessions and enjoyed that immensely as well. But it, what, how my approach to astrology is, is more soul-based. And so evolutionary astrology continues to be my foundation. I like to use the traditional astrology where it I explore it and use it where it makes sense for me and my astrology approach. So, so welcome. We're going to be exploring things, all astrology. So archetypes, life experiences, how we reflect about our life experiences and the value of that when we're considering astrology, because astrology and like what we look at is a reflection of life and not uh, causal. So, um, it's also to explore where we derive meaning and in the symbolism as we evolve through new opportunities that we are presented with for growth. So welcome to exploring all things astrology, archetypes, life experiences, and our reflections and where we derive meaning and symbolism as we evolve through the new opportunities that we are presented with for our growth. So here we go. If you are just finding this podcast at some future point in time, welcome all seekers and sages. And if you don't know my name, I'm Sarah Christensen. I'm a practicing astrologer now for about a decade as a practicing astrologer, but I've been studying astrology for 13 years as of 2023. And as I noted, I'm a primarily an evolutionary astrologer and I am passionate about all the past of souls through their healing journey um, to live more authentically. Stephen Forrest is my foremost teacher and Demetra George. And I also have learned a lot from Chris Brennan and his work and numerous astrology teachers that I have come across in the last 13 years. But for the first three years of my astrology journey, I really wasn't reaching out to any particular teacher. It was more through books and being inspired by what was emerging that I would learn from online that I would search for, and then I would go get a book, and then I would learn as much as I can on that particular book. Eventually evolved to, but I did have dreams about Pluto that kind of guided me toward evolutionary astrology at the time. Uh, but I kind of linked up into Stephen Forrest's material somewhere in that first 18 months. Um, but Robert Blaschke was also very key for me to kind of take the route towards the evolutionary perspective, the way he had languaged his material. And of course, um, Jeff Green. I think I had bought that Pluto book early on, had read it, but was very confused about it at first. But Stephen Forrest's information was more clear for me and it guided me to continue the path with more of his material, even though I went back to Jeff Green's material later on as I had learned more about astrology. So I like to give people kind of the, the three, uh, what we call the primal triad <laughs> in Stephen Forrest's material. Uh, my sun sign is Sagittarius. My moon is Taurus. And I'm a rising, uh, my rising sign is Aries. And my rising sign planet, Mars, is in Pisces in my 12th house. It's a Placidus 12th house and Pole sign 12th house. 
So that's always a, a, it been an interesting thing to consider in my astrology. And I continue to learn about myself as that is still emerging, emerging through towards my uh, ascendant, though it has been through the solar arc to the ascendant it has not by, by progression reached there so right now jupiter is in aries it's uh january of 2023 and this i feel is like a good time to emerge with podcast to take my astrology that i have been practicing to this format and um, saturn is also in aquarius right now and that can support me in bringing this into form i have a lot to learn about podcasting and all the things. I, for a long time, have desired to do something, but I wanted to have video. And so the whole idea with video and podcasting makes sense to me um, because I know I go as a person to YouTube a lot to look for information that I'm interested in and enjoy learning about things that way. So it made a lot of sense to me. And then I had to find the tools that would help me put it all together. So to start off um, my first episode, I just want to just share the story as if I had met you in person somewhere at an event and share, you know, how did I get into astrology? So I wanted to share that in the story, what led up to my awareness of the importance of astrology for me. So there was going back, we're going to go back into 2010. And that year, my daughter was I had she was born in 2006 in the fall and I had returned to work at a local college Um, I was excited to go back to work (laughs) and I was the director the career services and helping the students and the graduates get jobs in the local community and how to interview and all those things around their career very tenth house (laughs) and um, but back in January of 2010 I had been on that job for I think about six or seven months by then I had made some friends and with the other faculty and, and directors that were taking care of the operations of that campus. And we all, uh, two of us really, really liked, I should say three of us, three of us really liked esoteric things. Like we were just getting into Oracle cards a little bit at that time. And, and then another person had the astrology that I was going to learn about. <laughs> uh, on January 5th of 2010, I was headed to my very, very first Reiki session. I had had massages um, and thoroughly enjoyed that part of self-care for myself, but this was a very new thing because I was like, hmm, Reiki, I don't understand. But my friend at the college who I work with was like, you have to go, you have to go and have a session and then tell me about it later. (laughs) So I did, I went off and I scheduled time with the person that she had referred me to and I was not sure what to expect. I was like, okay, they're going to do some energy things. I'm not sure what this is. Okay. So at the time, um, in addition to the Oracle cards, I was also very interested in like angel. Gonna, I would have always been interested in like angel kind of experiences that people have shared. I've been a spiritual person a bulk of my life, even though I was came from organized religion. I think I was still spiritual even when I was in that. Spiritual consciousness books were something that I had touched into in my Saturn return. And here it was approaching my, I was approaching my Uranus opposition in 2010. And um, this was going to be the, the awakening <laughs> at the next level. So like books like The Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, I think is his name. Neil Donald Walsh, I think his name, did The Conversations with God. Um, I was also very interested in books around, I think, that came out that were kind of some more psychic related, but not um, just, just a little bit of that, but more that I cared about the spiritual experience, the transformational experience of those kinds of things, uh, a little bit in the not so sure where to put the category kind of thing. Very Pisces, I think. And I had read some of those books in my th- in my early 30s. But when I was a new mother, I the, the next subjects I kind of added to it were angel numbers came out of the blue at me because I was just starting to explore like, why am I seeing all these numbers? So I was looking into that. And um, the other subject that I was very interested in was near death experiences like NDEs and that kind of thing. So I was very interested in what the soul might be experienced between this world and being alive. And then what happens after we pass? I was very curious about these subjects with a Jupiter in Scorpio. That makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> so I was at my Reiki, the very first Reiki session, and I didn't know what to expect. 
and it was amazing. I, it was so hard for me to describe what I experienced, but it was the key moment that I would come back to if a few months down the line. So I had, when I was going through that experience, I, it was like, so, so see, I can't even put it to words almost now. It was, be, I was so elated. It was like touching bliss. It was just all of that. So much feeling. And at the same time, when I had my eyes closed just to relax into the moment, I was being very vivid, vivid imagery that was like gold outline light. So the, the images had gold outline light in them. So they stood out um, dramatically, you know, in the dark with my eyes closed. So through that energy, through that feeling, feeling elated, uh, it was just like a profound, profound experience. And I was, I had to like keep a note of this and how I felt. And at the time I was recording a lot of my experiences or things I needed to remember on my phone, new, you know, kind of my being a, a young mother, <laughs> this is how I kept track of things. So that recording would be so key for me in a future event. So I wanted to mention that first because sometimes we have something we don't understand, then it makes sense later. So a few months later, and of course I shared that experience with my my friend, the one friend at the college um, who was also a director. And I just kind of kept it myself, made notes in my journal. And then a few months later, the director, my director, who I reported to came out to where we are and we traveled up to another campus where we're trying to open another campus and we were going to be training some people. Um, And so we were there to set it up and all of that. And she's the one who uh, asked me on the drive between the hotel and the campus if I knew my sun and my my rising sign. I mean, I knew my sun sign, but at the time I'm like, mm, no, I'm not, I don't know what my rising sign is. Um, and she was, you know, talking about, you know, how she was interested in the subject. And I was like, oh, that sounds very interesting. And once we got on campus, she, you know, you know, got online and figured out how to figure out my birth chart with the time I knew my time of birth. Um, my mom had always kept uh, baby books for us kids. So I knew we, each of us were pretty familiar with our um, time of birth. So she plugged it in and poof, there it was. I was Aries rising and, um, and we were giggling about that and having fun setting up and all that. And then the person that we were meeting from that campus came out. And as we were setting up, she wanted to kind of fill in something on the slides that we were working on, I think how to spell my name or something. So she asked me at the time, well, how do you spell your name? Is that S-A-R-R-A-H? And I was like, what? (laughs) I had not changed my name yet. I had only been contemplating it. And so here was a moment that this stranger didn't know, but you know, a colleague that I had just met um, on another campus. And, and I had told my director, uh, that I was thinking about it and kind of involved in the conversation with, um, our astrology. And then she kind of became aware of that. We were talking about astrology and was interested to share that, uh, like, and have fun with it. So she's like, I want to guess your rising signs. And I was like, we were just talking about the rising sign. What, what is happening here? (laughs) So that day was just, filled with so many like what is going on so much uh synchronicity happening and not only the idea of changing my name was coming in as a synchronicity for her to ask me about how to spell my name because in all of my history no one I mean no one had ever asked me do you spell your name s-a-r-r-a-h so because usually it was you spell your name with an h or no h because my name from my birth was s-a-r-a-h and of course, I'd always, I would always tell people, yeah, it's spelled with an H. But here it was this very unique moment. Not only am I getting the kind of synchronicity about my name and the spelling that I was contemplating, it was almost like affirming that for me. And also the uh, moment of astrology coming in and my rising sign and kind of like these moments coming together like that. So that was pretty fun. Um, as she was guessing, she did guess my director's uh, rising sign, and, but she did not guess mine. Maybe it's because my rising, my rising sign planet Mars is in the 12th house. It's in the 12th house of Placidus and it's in the 12th house of the whole sign, uh, whole sign 
house system as well. What's interesting is like when you have those moments, you're just like, what just happened? You're just kind of left shaking your head. And I, re- I was writing in my journal all these things that were occurring or I was making notes on my phone and then putting that into my journal. So a few, uh, I think a few days later, I was getting my paperwork ready to go get my name changed taking it to the courts to the judges to do so but you have to get it you have to have get it stamped by an individual who I can't remember that what that's called but my coworker at was one of those um, who could do that and she could authorize the documents I can't remember this escaping my mind at this moment but she was she could do that um, she had the official stamp to do that um, so it was so very convenient and just like it was it was always like the the highway was open and clear and ready to go to change my name and and that ha- that occurred in the very early part of April of 2010. And I think it wasn't even like six or seven days later that I um, had a vision. And it started off as a dream, but then it is definitely a vision because it's when I had awakened and uh, it was still going. And this was a life changing, everything turned upside down and inside out and all of all the things when this occurred for me. This experience changed my life forever, but I couldn't put it all together. All I could do was like, yes, this occurred for me and I could speak it to a very, very trusted friend and and then more things started to unfold. It was like everything went into a quickening for me in terms of synchronicity. They were happening pretty frequently, but they were just doubling up, multiplying really quickly and what I was getting. And, but also just... It felt like downloads, I guess. Is that what you say? It was just like percolating questions and imageries with, and I was trying to like write down what I was experiencing the best I could, but not knowing all that was in that mo- that moment or those moments. It's more like moments. So the the vision April fourteenth, the morning of April fourteenth, changed everything. But it would take time to understand what. <laughs> what was changing and what was in that. And, um, but it was, um, that then kind of propelled me to purchase my very first astrology book. I went down to Barnes and Noble and found a really big one. (laughs) I think it was the only astrology book you will ever need book. I believe that was the one. (laughs) That's not the case, right? Um, but definitely a great first book. And I remember sitting at my desk and having that book open and then having the prompting within you know my inner ears like go listen to your 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 audio recording that you did you know about your reiki session the reiki session reiki is like reiki session go back to that recording i went back to that recording and in that those moments i realized that here i am peering over this golden book because it was yellow golden yellow and that was what that session had prompted me uh, when I had those imageries, that was the main image that I got that I was peering over this golden book. And I mean, there were more in the images and more information for me to understand about, so I think more related to my becoming, but it was a very poignant moment. It was pointing to this moment that I was reading and starting to study astrology. So I knew, I knew in my soul and everything uh, that was unfolding that this was the key. I had the, I had to stay focused on the astrology. So um, even though I had numerology, to me, numerology just opened the gate and I played with it, but it did, did not fine tune things like astrology did. And astrology was so critical in the truth and what it would reveal for me about myself and then how I might relate with other people. Astrology became my anchor. It is still my anchor, but it absolutely during that period of time, as I was move, moving quickly to address trauma that was arising for me to deal with. And over the next three years, three and a half years, um, that was really profound. And my life was very stormy and full of chaos and um, a lot of things erupting in my life. But astrology, um, having astrology helped me kind of look at each thing moment by moment and help me address things from also looking into the past. It was great for reflecting things in the past and to help me heal. And um, it's always a healing. It's a continuation, right? So I just thought it was amazing that all these things and how it coalesced for me. I know everybody has their individual story of how they 
came into astrology. But I think it's amazing <laughs> for me in how fast we learn when our lives do feels like it depends on it, right? And um, so that is my uh, my story of how astrology came into my life. It was full of magic, full of what felt like unimaginable uh, synchronicities and experiences um, that just stood out from everything else I'd ever experienced. And so um, I thank you for the time to share this story with you today. I am so interested in sharing other stories of my journey to this point or wherever I am um, on this journey, um, 13 years in now. So um, thanks for listening to this first episode of the podcast for One Sage's View. And I look forward to sharing more, uh, what I've learned um, along the way and what I can learn from others. Um, I enjoy learning astrology so much and I get excited about sharing that with other people as well. I am looking forward to doing just kind of one-off solo episodes, but also episodes where I invite guests uh, especially for subject material that they have done extensive research in that I would like to bring forward for other people and then maybe have rich dialogue around that um, on the on the podcast and uh, for students to um, get excited about as well. I invite you into this adventure with me and I'm looking forward to where it goes. So I am learning a lot. So I am sure there will be things I fine tune in terms of the production of the podcast, but I appreciate everyone who joins me and follows along and participates and shares in the community of it. Um, this podcast will be suitable for beginners to intermediate. Um, I, I think it's wonderful that even if you're very beginning student of astrology, that you can listen and have questions inspired about what is being presented maybe in more advanced material intermediate material but um, I recall that when I was a beginning student uh, listening to those who were much further into their research and their experience with astrology and how exciting that was for me so I hope that inspires the same and I thank you so much, everyone. And I wish you a great rest of your day, wherever you are and whenever you are. Namaste. Bless this moment. Bye. Thanks for listening. The One Sages View podcast is available anywhere you stream or download podcasts. It is also available on YouTube at my One Sages View channel. You may reach me at my website, onesagesview.com, and on Instagram and Facebook for consultations and upcoming events. Transcripts will be posted at my website within the month. I'm Sarah Christensen, your host. Until next time, may the stars in the heavens light the path ahead as you discover all the beauty of who you are.